When we talk about drainages, one such pathology that comes to mind is abscess drainage. An abscess is potentially curable, and it is noted that without drainage, they have high morbidity and mortality rates. Localizing an abscess accurately will determine its relationship to adjacent structures. CT sign of abscess, though not always present, will be extraluminal gas. It is the most specific CT sign. Fluid collections that respond the most favorably to percutaneous abscess drainage are well-defined, unilocular, free-flowing, and accessible. Surgical drains allow removal of fluid and or gas from a wound or body cavity. They are implanted into the body, for example, a nasogastric tube, a urinary catheter, vascular access ports, and ventral co-peritoneal shunts, or Penrose drains. They're generally made of rubber or silicone and help the healing process by removing inflammatory mediators, bacteria, foreign material, and necrotic tissue. There are two types of drains, the passive drain and the active drain. Passive drains are most commonly used in wounds after surgery where dead space is present or when accumulation of fluid is anticipated. Passive drains have no suction and work according to the differential pressure between body cavities and the exterior. Active drains are closed systems that work under suction, either high or low pressure, and they empty into a reservoir. This reservoir prevents saturation of bandage material, decreases the risk for ascending infection, and can limit exposure of hospital staff or other patients to contaminated fluid. Percutaneous image-guided drainage is the first-line treatment for infection or symptomatic fluid collections in the abdomen and pelvis in the absence of indications for immediate surgery. The technology and expertise needed to perform percutaneous abscess drainage are widely available and readily adapted for use in the pediatric population. This image-guided drainage of a pancreatic abscess in a 16-year-old male shows an abscess noted by the curved arrows anterior to the pancreas and posterior to the stomach as seen by the open arrow. We can also see unopacified loops of the small bowel located laterally as seen by the solid straight arrows in image A, which is an axial CT image. In image B, we can see an axial CT image 
showing the placement of a catheter as seen by the open arrow via the percutaneous route noted by the solid arrow. This image shows a liver abscess on an axial CT image. A hypodense lesion in the liver with peripheral enhancement is noted. 